The city of Alton, Illinois was founded by Rufus Easton. Easton was born on May 4, 1774 to Joseph and Mahitable Baker Easton. He was born and he grew up in Litchfield, Connecticut, where he studied law in his hometown and later moved to Rome, New York to further his education. While there, he met Albie Smith and he married her in 1799. Not only did Easton study law, he was also a politician, an attorney, and a postmaster. Easton had arrived in St. Louis in 1804 in expedition to set up a territorial government after the purchase of the Louisiana Purchase. In 1805, Easton had received two federal appointments from President Thomas Jefferson as a territorial judge and the first postmaster of St. Louis and had made history on April 21, 1810 by handwriting the first St. Louis postmark and also responsible for construction of the first post office in St. Louis. As early as 1814, Easton had been interested in land in Madison County, Illinois, and Missouri. Easton had thought the future site of Alton would make a fine settlement with an abundance of natural resources and being in close distances to the Illinois, Missouri, and Mississippi rivers, as rivers were the main ways of travel at this time for easier and safer travels, while traveling on land was more dangerous due to hostile native groups and uncharted lands. In 1817, Easton had Thomas Lippincott, who was a businessman who worked for East at the time, sketch a map of his future town. Lippincott sketched the town front of the river and extended it north to 9th Street, bounded by Pisaw Street to the west and Henry Street to the east. This original area was known as Middletown. Easton had also set up a ferry that would travel downriver to St. Louis in hopes to attract travelers to visit his new town. He was so confident in his ferry that he had reserved the ferry rights to himself. Easton's Ferry was located on a creek in Alton named Pisaw Creek, but was later called Fountain Creek, named by Easton for his ferry which he named Fountain Ferry. He got the name Fountain from a creek that flowed from a natural cave that stood on a hill near 16th Street and just west of Bell Street that would flow downhill into the Mississippi River. This creek is now covered over and is now Pisaw Street. Easton had named his settlement Alton in honor of his first son, Alton Rufus Easton, Easton also had streets named after for his other sons, George, Henry, and Langdon, and Albie for his wife. In 1818, Easton had William Pinkard and Daniel Croom construct four log cabins in his town. Two of these were to be built together into a hotel called the Holly House, where it stood on the corner of Broadway and Pisaw Street, and it was constructed for travelers when traveling to Alton. It was later torn down in 1868, and it was the first structure built in Alton. A year later, in 1819, a row of houses was built under the edge of a bluff near the river road, and a trail was also constructed allowing easier passage between Alton and Milton. Rufus Easton had also constructed a bridge over the Woods River Creek from Alton to Milton. Easton contracted Joel Finch to build a frame bridge for a sum of $200. More bridges soon appeared over the creek costing the same price. The first records of Alton being a town was recorded on February 12, 1817 when the ferry was licensed. Easton had suggested to Lippincott to start his business in his new town, but Lippincott had decided to start his business in Milton. Easton and Lippincott boarded on Easton's ferry with their supplies and headed to Alton. When arriving, Lippincott loaded his goods on a wagon and headed east to Milton on a trail leading to the settlement. Easton had also promoted his new town St. Louis newspapers, such as the Missouri Gazette, stating, surrounded by the richest soil and best settlement to be found in the Illinois country. Easton selected special lots for his family and friends for which he sold to very low prices. Failing to attract settlers to visit his new town, Easton was forced to offer lots at public auctions. With the panic of 1819 and banks failing, other people claimed some of Easton's lands, such as Charles Hunter and Nathaniel Pope. Easton returned to St. Louis to clear his name of bankruptcy and began anew. He later died in 1834 in St. Charles, Missouri, and he is now buried at Lindenwood College Cemetery. Charles Hunter went on to purchase land east of Middletown, which was known as Alton on the River, but was later changed to Hunterstown. This area is one of the oldest settlements in Alton. Charles Hunter went on to construct the Lime Kiln and offered land to settlers in exchange for brick making. He chose his site to attract settlers who came across the river from Missouri and settlers up north from Upper Alton and Salu. Charles Hunter had placed advertisements in St. Louis and Springfield, Illinois offering land. The Alton Cemetery was established here in 1845, although people had been buried here in this area as early as 1812. 
Hunterstown was a growing community housing most residents of Alton and was where most of the small factories, lumber yards, warehouses, and stores were located. Alton started to grow in the early 1820s as limestone was in huge quantities near the city as well as vast amounts of timber in the area, but the natural beauty was the main reason attracting settlers to Alton. In 1827, John M. Crum had authorized the construction of the first state penitentiary in Illinois and it was completed in 1832. It was built on land just west of William Street on a hill close to the Mississippi River. It would be used to house Confederate soldiers during the Civil War until relocated to Joliet, Illinois. Later in the 1830s, Alton continued to grow with the rise of travelers starting businesses in the town. In 1834, there were flour mills, warehouses, and sawmills all near the Mississippi River. There was also 16 stores and two public houses named the Olden House and the Bradley Boarding House. But the rise of travelers, some lots were sold for hundreds of dollars. The town was booming during this time and the people of Alden saw a future for the town. In the 1830s, Alton was considered the most desirable place to settle on the east side of the Mississippi River. Some people referred to St. Louis as the little town downriver from Alton. Alton's growth was so rapid at this time that a group of businessmen from St. Louis named James Mason and Henry Von Paul decided to start a ferry and also create a town to decrease Alton's growth. They established the town of Grafton, Illinois by 1832 and their ferry would help St. Louis grow. In 1831, Alton's population was 170 people with 32 families. With the rise of settlers, structures were being built in the town such as log cabins, churches, and schools such as the Alden Seminary and Shirtliff College, which is now SIU Dental School. The first newspaper to appear in Alton was the Alden Spectator. It was founded in Upper Alton in 1832 and it existed until 1839. The Alton Telegraph was later founded in 1836 by Richard Treadway and Lawson Parks. It continued until 1855 when its subscriptions list was sold to the Alton Courier. This paper was closed down in 1861 when the Telegraph was revived by Parks and others. There were over 40 newspapers founded in Alton between 1832 and 1875, but the Alton Telegraph survived. In the following years, Alton would continue to see growth. However, tragic events would soon occur in 1837 that would leave a mark in the city's history forever. On the night of November 7th, 1837, a mob of nearly 200 men carrying torches surrounded a brick warehouse on the edge of the Mississippi River. The warehouse held the printing press of an abolitionist newspaper called the Alden Observer, edited by Reverend Elijah P. Lovejoy. Before living in Alton, Elijah Lovejoy lived in St. Louis but was forced to move after his abolitionist views. On three separate occasions, angry mobs threw his newspaper printing press in the Mississippi River. On November 6th, the 4th press arrived in Alton and was placed under guard in the Godfrey Gilman warehouse. The mob had attacked around midnight on November 7th. One man had put a ladder on the warehouse and climbed it with a torch to set the building on fire. Lovejoy ran out to stop him and was shot five times in the chest and died seconds later on the corner of Broadway and William Street. After Lovejoy's tragic death, he was left in the warehouse overnight. The next day, a grave was dug on a high hill in the Alton Cemetery. The tragedy of Lovejoy's murder would soon curse the Alton's growth for the coming years. Property values shrank and stories were told across America of the attacks that took place in Alton. Alton was regarded as a lawless place. New settlers avoided the area and many current residents had moved elsewhere. But by 1839, Alton had began to revive as packing houses were doing extremely well. The town soon gained a reputation as a shipping center for crops. Settlers from Germany and Switzerland who lived in Alton became farmers and produced fruits, vegetables, and livestock all being shipped out of Alton. Between 1838 and 1839, there were 700 steamboats arriving in the Alton Harbor. By 1840, there were 1,100 steamboats arriving. The city recovered on two important things, the Mississippi River and the railroads. Although Alton was reviving, it couldn't compete with the steamboat landings that St. Louis had. St. Louis began to have the largest trade in the area. After a few years, Alton revived with steamboats still being the main way of travel, although it wouldn't be long until Alton began to build a railroad. The most successful one was the Godfrey Gilman and Company Railroad. Benjamin Godfrey and Simon Ryder formed the partnerships for easier travels between Alton and New Orleans. Another railroad was constructed in 1841 between Alton and Springfield, Illinois. Construction came at a standstill because of no payments for the materials. 
Eventually, they were able to raise one-fourth of the money and the rest from investors in the East. By 1833, Alton was officially incorporated as a town, and by 1840, the population was 2,500 people. Benjamin Godfrey had supervised the construction of the railroad and had lived in a railroad car during the construction process. He had mortgaged all of his property and hoped for completion of the railroad. In 1850, the railroad managed to make its way from the high hills in Alton. This proved to be a difficult task that nearly bankrupted Benjamin Godfrey, but work continued and by 1852, the railroad had reached Springfield, Illinois. From there, the line continued north going to Bloomington, to Joliet, and finally Chicago by 1856. The railroad company was later named to the Chicago and Alton Railroad. After its completion, the railroad purchased a steamboat named the Altonan for passage for travelers heading to St. Louis and beyond. The railroad ran for many years and was an important way of travel for many people. The station was located down the riverfront, what is now Front Street connecting the Paisal Street, but was later torn down in 1958.